Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a great uh, weekend. Hope everybody had a, a really good first week of trading. Uh, it's 2023, uh, brand new year, brand new start to the year. Uh, the question remains is what is going to happen this year? Uh, if you look at going back into last year's stats, again, just kind of a quick reminder, I think everybody knows, uh, pretty dismal starts. You have the S&P, uh, S&P finishes, excuse me, uh, S&P down almost 19%, and you have the NASDAQ composite down 33%. So anything, right? Any type of baby steps in the first uh, first week of the year would be a positive sign, at least mentally, uh, especially for a lot of investors, not necessarily traders, but a lot of investors who went and took all the pain uh, to the downside in 2022. The question was, what was gonna happen? And if you looked at uh, the first part of the year, first part of the week, uh, we, again, we opened the same way we opened below uh, the 50-day moving average in 2022. You had two, three days of pretty good selling, followed by a dead cat bounce day, followed by another uh, aggressive sell-off prior uh, to the December uh, jobs number that came out on Friday. And Friday, we you know we had our first uh, pretty good, I mean, pretty solid rally uh, of the year. Uh, if you look at this final statistics, uh, Dow down, uh, excuse me, up uh, 700 points. You had uh, about 2%, everything moved about 2%. You had the S&P and the NASDAQ all up about 2 2.5%. Uh, for the day but if you look at the final uh you know standings towards the end of the week after everything was all said and done in a really good aggressive powerful rally on friday and again if we look at the jobs data and again i'm not one of the big ones who's going to start breaking down uh sentence by sentence but it you know the fed basically is making their point that uh they believe uh that inflation is cooling the red rate heights are working um and there and they are optimistic it will continue to do so and then you have statements on the other hand for example uh atlanta fed president bostic who basically came out and be like well let's not get crazy we don't expect uh, we don't expect rates to uh to come down matter of fact we, we expect the rates to hold uh, over five percent not only for 2003 but possibly 2024 but eventually all this Fed talk, all these rates talk, inflation talk, like everything else throughout uh, Wall Street's history. Remember, we had a pandemic, how, how this was gonna crush the, the whole universe, right? Remember, we were rallied to all-time highs after, that, after, that, uh, after the pandemic started. So eventually, investors and traders, they get numb to it. And Friday was a perfect example of, well, investors, at least for one day, investors and traders, at least for one day, were numb to the news, a big, powerful rally, uh, into uh, into the close and now kind of sets us up for Monday session. Now the question is going into Monday session and again if you guys uh, look at the indexes and we'll get into the individual areas where I think uh, bulls and bears have to uh, reclaim their uh, respective numbers. I think one of the biggest aspects when you go look back into uh, 2022 was the big spikes in the market based on uh, Fed minutes, based on Fed governor's conversation, but based on uh, Chairman Powell's intraday comments. And the one thing that you'll notice um, for 2022, even, even this last example, right? Even this last example going into November, going into December, a lot of the Fed news, a lot of the Fed comments that deemed to be really good and had really big one or two day runs ultimately faded, right? Like here is the CPI uh, in November, had a big run and then faded. If you guys remember, uh, Chairman Powell had that whole uh, had their whole Powell pump rally. You guys remember that really, really big, aggressive four and a half percent move after two thirty, right on uh, November the thirtieth. That got faded, right? The December uh, CPI, right? That came out. That got faded. And the question is now, what happens, right? Based on what we saw, does it have to get faded? Absolutely not. Nothing is set in stone. If that was set in stone based on uh, historical events, then everybody should have been short max size 
uh, going into Monday's session, but we don't know. That's the whole point. Nobody knows what's going to happen. We have data. We try to study the data. We try to uh, use that data's information to kind of work our game plan into the next day. But at, at the end of the day, nobody knows what's going to happen. And that's the whole point of why we always talk about don't guess, right? Don't guess, okay? Uh, you know, let the data play out. Nobody knows what's going to happen the next day. You always have to uh, prepare on the long side. You always have to compare, prepare to the short side just in case, uh, just in case uh, the market doesn't play out in your direction. Before we go on, uh, before we all go on, guys, as always, uh, I really do appreciate uh, everybody's support uh, for this channel. Uh, if you could be so kindly, if you are getting value, drop a like on the video. If you are brand new to this channel, we try to give uh, an unbiased view of the market going into the next day. Now, the next week, next month, the next year, into the next day with data points of technical analysis. So if you are new, please subscribe to the channel and share uh, this journey with us. But going into uh, Monday's session, we, we do see, right? And that's the whole point of collecting data. We do see majority of stocks trading, closing closer to their upper channels than they do to their bottom channels. So when you're closing to the top of the channel versus the bottom, obviously on anybody's, right? Anybody's uh, process or, or train of thought, you wanna see that confirmation from Friday's, uh, uh, Friday's trading day back to Monday. Does it have to happen to be determined, but at least we are prepared. And that's the whole point. So let's talk about, let's talk about some areas of the market uh, that the bulls and the bears need to uh, defend. Okay, so Friday, big, big move, obviously, in the S&P, 87 points move in S&P, and they traded right back to the 50-day moving average, right? So going into the foreseeable future, it doesn't even have to be for Monday because it's such a big channel. <clears throat> As you can see here, uh, 3,800 held one, two, three times, right? It held three times. So 3,800 on the S&P, uh, is going to be the line in the sand, right? That's a very, very big number. And obviously the bulls don't want to give back this candle and the bears desperately want to reclaim back for a possible move back to this Bollinger Band at 3740. On the flip side, the bulls desperately, you see where you see where this light blue line is, right? See how many times it's gotten rejected with this light blue line, right? That's the that's the 50 day moving average. That is where uh, the whole narrative of the market could potentially change. And this is why uh, the bulls initially got rejected uh, off the 50-day moving average on Friday's rally. So what the bulls need to do is get above this 3906 on the close. You see how it, the high here is, you see how the high here is 3906, right? The 50-day moving average 3904. So the bulls need to desperately close above 3904. If we can close above that 3904, 33, 3905 area, then yeah, there's a really, really good chance this rally is prolonged and it doesn't become a debt cat bounce anymore. It becomes something a little bit more meaningful, a little bit more uh, meat on its bones. And then you could have a, a pretty good staircase uh, going all the way up to this 3969, 3970 level. So it's pretty important uh, for the bulls to you know take what they started on Friday, good baby steps, obviously not gonna make back everything uh, what they lost in 2022, but it was a very good positive effect. Whether you call it a dead cat bounce, we will see. Whether this was the bottom, nobody cares. And again, another thing, guys, everybody's so bent on uh, calling a bottom, or finding a bottom, who cares? Like, what's the difference? How is, this, how is this so meaningful in your life that you found the bottom a quarter bottom? We're trading by the day. We're not trading by the year. It's like somebody turning around and going, at two, you know, at two, at two hundred, Tesla's definitely a bottom. At one eighty, Tesla's definitely a bottom. A Tesla one hundred one, Tesla's definitely a bottom. Who cares? If it is, it is. If it's not, if it's not, trade it day by day. The one thing we'll get to Tesla in a second. I kind of liked uh, what I saw on Friday's action, but more important, guys. Again, let's look at the macro view and see where we are on the QQQs. We talked about uh, the two big levels uh, going into uh, going into this week. On you know throughout the last week's videos, uh, you saw how many times it held it. You know it, it it defended that 262 level. What was interesting about um, what the bears didn't do more, more than the bulls did, the bears twice got below 
uh, this 262 level. First time getting all the way down to 261 and then bouncing back. Good job by the bulls. And then Friday, when the December uh, when the December numbers came out, you know, the first inclination was a, a pretty decent move to the downside. They traded down to 260. And just like they did for the whole week here defending 262, the bulls reclaimed the 262. And remember that 267 level we were talking about, right? It was 267 to the upside, 262 to the downside. To the bulls' credit, they did reclaim the 267 and then traded right back to the top of the channel here. So this is where the big, this is where it becomes very, very interesting for uh, the bulls. Just like we talked about it on the SPX 3904. The bulls not necessarily were not near the 50-day moving average yet just because we've gotten so de destroyed, right? And especially in the technology names, they have to go a little bit baby steps, a little bit more baby steps than the S&P uh, got accomplished on Friday. But you see the top of the channel here, right? It was two, uh, 270.15, right? That's the uh, um, December 3rd highs. Look at Friday's highs, right? Roughly 270. So you can see here, the bulls, for, for this rally to extend, the bulls need to get it back above this 270 level. Any close above 270, right? You see it? Any close above this 270, because they got rejected again from that 270 level uh, again on Friday. Any close above 270 then reclaims the 20-day supply. Okay, that's this big... Um, this is a big thick line here. So if the bulls can reclaim that 270, then you have, again, just like the SPX, something meaningful. Maybe you get a move back to the 272. Anything above 272, we're kind of looking down the line a little bit. Then you have an attack potential into the 50-day moving average. And that, exactly what you saw here last time, got rejected. The bulls desperately need, again, once again, to kind of uh, change and establish a whole narrative uh, con continuing, hopefully continuing their rally. The last thing the bulls do, don't want to do is to lose back yesterday's rally, uh, lose Friday's low of the day into the 260s, and then again, you can see what your downside potential is uh, all the way down to 254. A lot of the individual names that, that really, really um, acted really well on Friday, where, where they didn't act well throughout the week, even on up days, on dead cat bounds days, uh, Microsoft, for example, if you've been watching the video, uh, has gotten absolutely destroyed in the last three days. Nice little turnaround with everything else, but again, very, very small bounce. But you had a lot of the leaders not performing well until Friday's turnaround, right? Microsoft got absolutely destroyed. Amazon uh, was was really about to get hit. Amazon almost lost this big macro area, at, you know, right before uh, the turnaround. Uh, Tesla, right? Tesla has been getting absolutely manhandled. Uh, throughout, not only, uh, obviously, not only through 2022, it obviously spilled over to 2023. They had more uh, cuts in production uh, talk on Friday. They got it all the way down to 101 before a really nice uh, turnaround. And the, the one thing what I did like was that the bulls right away kind of swallowed up that 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 number uh the data that came out it, it, it didn't you know it didn't linger for three four five hours the majority of the names kind of turned on a dime all the stocks that got really killed throughout the week like the snows of the world right a lot of names right we don't have to go through a lot of names but a lot of names got really really destroyed and they snapped back within the first uh, 40 45 minutes or so and started a pretty you know meticulous seamless rally uh, throughout the day, which pretty much closed at the high. So that's what the bulls have going for it. The question is, can they do it again, right? And that's the most important part. Uh, as we've seen throughout this bear cycle that started in 2022, you know, as many days you will have to the upside, we've shown and demonstrated over and over again, they will be two, three days of rallying. That's why I called uh, the last bear market of 2022, probably the most orderly bear market I've ever seen and the most bullish bear market I've ever seen because the bulls actually have two, three, sometimes four days of follow through. Like look at right here, right? You have one, two, three, four, five days of follow through, one, two, three, right? And so my point is, even though we are still macro below the 50 day moving average and always keep that in mind, that at any time it could get pulled. Obviously you wanna watch those levels we just talked about to make sure they don't get rejected again. But the point is you can still get a two, three, four day rally. The question is, can the bulls do it? We'll see, right, to, to, be, to, you know, to be determined. But always, like I say, every single video, nobody knows what's gonna happen. I surely don't. I am prepared uh, on both sides of the market and whatever confirms, that's where uh, we are going to uh, try to focus. Again, I am not a bull. Uh, I'm definitely not a bear. I am an opportunist and we try to take advantage 
of data that is you know, presented to us. So let's talk about some ideas. So let's start off with Tesla. Uh, by no means do I think Tesla is out of the woods. Uh, it did have a great, great turnaround with some phenomenal volume, right? Really, really phenomenal volume uh, back to uh, the upside. Listen, is it possible it gets one or two more days up, upside? If it does, you see the top of the channel here, right? Because I'm definitely watching. I mean, I trade Tesla every day, but I'm definitely, definitely watching it for a potential upside move. Obviously, if it doesn't, then we'll watch for downside action. That's, that's, that's That goes without saying. But let's just, let's on phase value, right? You see where it stopped here at the linear regression line and it stopped here on Friday? It's the same area, right? It's the same area. If Tesla could confirm, and it's a very big if, but if Tesla could confirm the 10 day moving average, why can't this thing then start filling in the gap, right? Then you have your next measure potential of uh, the January 3rd high of 1880. And then ultimately, if this thing really started to getting some stretching is all the way up to this 124.40s, right? So it's obviously some channels we definitely wanna to watch to the upside, nothing goes straight down, nothing goes straight up. But at the same time, uh, we are wary that this whole macro area is still incredibly negative for Tesla. And I'm definitely watching downside channels in case the upside uh, gets stuffed. Uh, look at Apple, right? Look at Apple. And again, this is where you're not going to get these obvious breakouts at the top of the channel, but you have to start looking at intermediate channels. You see this whole range here, right? Look at look how many times it's gotten rejected off the same range here. If Apple can just get above this range here, you could see a 2 $3 move into the next supply of the 20-day moving average, right? Look at a name, for example, like NVIDIA. You know, semis uh, were definitely the ones that led the market in 2020 and 21. They got destroyed and killed the market in 2022. Friday, they were, you, you can make an argument, they were definitely the strongest group uh, within the NASDAQ 100. And again, same thing as same chart as Apple, same type as Tesla. If the Qs can reclaim, look at this channel here in the video, right? Again, nobody's saying this is the bottom. I don't care if this is the bottom. We're just trying to take it one day at a time one trade at a time. So if we can get above this channel here, then you have a potential move to this 153, 155 level. Uh, looks interesting as well. And to the downside, a name, you know, just want to give you guys just one name, one, you know, one or two names. Everything else will obviously watch. You see how Splunk, right? You see how Splunk held the bottom of the channel here several times and held the 50-day moving average? If the market turns, and this one obviously did not participate on Friday, and that's kind of what you want to see, uh, anything when you're, when you're making your actionable uh, trading list for the next day, you want to see what participates and closes at the top of the channel. We also want to see what didn't participate and it's closer to the bottom of the channel in case the market turns in the opposite direction. So let's keep an eye on Splunk, right? If, th if this thing starts losing the bottom of the channel here, that will confirm the 50-day moving average. And the last time it confirmed the 50-day moving average, right? You can see you had one, two, three, four, oh wait, five days of selling before reversal uh, to the upside. So that's it, man. We are prepared for both sides of the market. We have our levels uh, down packed. We, we, we are prepared from both sides of the market. We're not trying to guess where the market's going to do and try to be smart and try to be intelligent. We're just trying to go where the price action is screaming at us off the top of the hill of where we believe it's going to go next. So stay prepared, guys. Uh, stay blessed, everybody. Stay healthy. But the most important part, especially in the first three years, stay in business. Guys, God bless. And I will see you all on Monday. Take care.